like, bro. She got, she got a kid. Look at his back. Oh my god. <laughs> up y'all welcome back to another reaction this is king vaughn raps first serial killer with trap lord ross man you know i will say rest in peace king. and no i'll just leave it up in the air you know it, it is a tragedy that he died because it was like the brim of his career i really felt like he was going to be like the next big thing in rap if he wanted that like he definitely would have been bigger than little dirk like definitely like I feel like he was already kind of like stealing that shine a little bit from like just coming up just like the over visceral energy like he just had this he was hood people just knew he was real he, he they haven't seen some, anything greater since tk yeah like like dirk he was a rapper for a while and like he was a I, I didn't demon. see him like really blowing up until like he was blowing up but not to like this extent before king vaughn died yeah so when you first heard of king vaughn what was your first overall like reaction to him like did you think oh this dude was like a, a killer Murder or dude. I just thought it was just like any other rapper. Yeah, I just thought another Chirac dude, another Chicago rapper. But then I just, you know, I've seen a bit more of like t the stuff that he was like into over there. Like, you know, like. Because you got to think, bro, all them dudes is like in the same area doing the same thing. And it, like, if they're, if, the, if that person is like, if he's not killing somebody, somebody around him is killing somebody. Well, the gang culture is very much proliferated over there. Um, it's been proliferated throughout the music for the past few years. At this point, it's, it's steamrolled, like, the the culture is steamrolled so much to the point to where, like, it's such a, it's just, it's a destructive thing in black people's uh, communities. That it's just, like, I don't know, man. What can, what can we really even do about it? You know what's funny? I just seen this, um, this video from, I, I forgot who the, I forgot what rapper he was from. It's a rapper from, like, the 80s or 90s, you know, I think it was early 90s. Biggie Smalls did a song with him. Who? Bones of Harmony. Oh. One of the dudes from Bones of Harmony. So pretty much he got brought to like this meeting. All these all these top rap guys who were like very prominent around this time during the early nineties, you know, they they brought him to this uh this place in LA and they kind of had like this like it's basically a secret meeting almost where like these executives that they were under and shit were talking about how they were like investing into like these private prisons this was in the ni early 90s this is before they even were even built these private prisons that are being built that were built everywhere in the united states and uh they basically told them that they want these rappers to proliferate gang and drugs and all this other that's bad for the community so that the crime rate will likely be higher in our community because it would be a part of the culture so then those niggas will get arrested and they're sent to the private prisons who the government is giving money to the private prisons Per person who's in the prison. You know That's crazy. Saying? So it all just comes steamrolling. Now we got guys like King Vaughn, who's now su supposedly the rap first serial killer. I don't want, I mean, I, I understand what rap, uh, you know, Trap Little, Trap Little Ross is doing. He's trying to proliferate, you know, Vaughn's story and all that. But damn, man, I don't, I don't understand why he even got this far, bro. I don't understand how our community let it get this far. Like, we got guys like this. People look up to these type of guys, like you know. And they got whole uh, statues and stuff. Like this nigga murdered people. He bragged about murdering people. He went out of his way to seek people and to kill them. This is happening a lot. Like this is not like I used to think like it was just like a few niggas in the hood. Like there's a lot of niggas out here who are really like just depraved and like trauma. It like so much traumatic and just the prey shit that we've seen and like they will probably witness and like just around their their areas it's just like it's completely altering the way that they're interacting with other people it's just like it's like, like this i don't know i'm not gonna ramble on too long uh hit that like button subscribe and share man it's a road to 10k really appreciate everybody to come back to the channel we're gonna hop right into the video contains themes of violence death and gang activity. This video is for educational and documentary purposes only. This video is not intending to incite or encourage illegal behavior in any way. Every effort has been made to remove any content which violates YouTube's community guidelines. If you'd like to see an uncut version of this video with everything that I can't show you on YouTube, 
head on over to patreon.com slash traplorross. Supporters of the channel also get access to my recent vlogs with Academics and Adam22, as well as my old deleted King Von videos, and supporters on the $5 tier will also have access to my exclusive four-part Patreon series where I break down real crimes caught on camera which I could never show you on YouTube. But if you don't want any of that, just sit back, enjoy the video, and hit that subscribe button. Ever since the 1980s, gangster rap has been one of hip-hop's most fascinating subgenres. From the mean streets of gang-infested Los Angeles that were brought to life by early gangster rap pioneers like Ice Cube and N.W.A., to Tupac and Suge Knight taking over the music game with vivid tales of gang-affiliated rappers who would bully their way into the music industry. And then you have legends like Jay-Z and 50 Cent whose tales of life in the streets as gangsters made them millionaires hundreds of times over. For decades now, rap fans have been looking for the realest artists whose lyrics paint the picture of a real life of crime that isn't embellished or fabricated. But when it comes to rappers who truly keep it real, the Chicago drill scene has dominated for the last decade. First popularized by Chief Keef, the Chicago drill wave was characterized by rappers that grew up in the most dangerous blocks in America, with these up-and-coming artists rapping plainly and honestly about what they experienced growing up. Shootings on the block, disrespecting dead enemies, and constantly being chased by the police. Chicago drill rappers took gangster rap to raw new heights, because in the years after Chief Keef popularized the violent stories of Chicago gang life, one of those gangsters killing people in the streets picked up a microphone too, and started rapping in the first person from the perspective of the actual killer. King Von had a reputation in Chicago as a fearless killer before he'd even started rapping, and it's widely believed based on the statements he made in his own songs that Von himself could have killed as many as seven people in his career as a gangbanger with more murders even taking place after he got rich and famous, with it being rumoured that Von used his money and influence from the rap game to have old enemies in Chicago killed, and going on a journey which, in my opinion, takes him far beyond a street player who had to kill to survive in the mean streets of Chicago, because if King Von's tweets are anything to go by, he simply loved killing people. And the sheer amount of people that King Von allegedly played a role in killing has led to intense speculation as to whether he was a full-blown serial killer a title which King Von's enemies even said that him and his friends took personal pride in. Now, the FBI defines a serial killer as a person who kills over three people with time spans in between them of more than a month. Furthermore, serial killers tend to have an element of psychological gratification which plays a role in the motive for their murders. The FBI also state that a serial killer might seek various kinds of gratification through their killings, such as anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, or simply for attention. I personally believe that over the course of his career, King Von demonstrated all of these characteristics and can indeed be classified as a serial killer. King Von frequently exhibited behaviour in public that conformed with these rules, tweeting regularly about his desire to kill, bragging about having committed specific murders in his music, which attracted him international attention and billboard charting songs, with his drill anthems about murdering rivals making him a rich man with millions in his bank account. The FBI also point out another characteristic of serial killers, specifically that their victims may all have something in common, for example, a demographic profile, appearance, gender, or race. And it would appear that King Von only killed young black men and women from the community he lived in. These were all people, just like him, being born into a rundown part of Chicago and growing up with a lot of disadvantages. All that really separated Von from his victims were the fact that they were from a rival territory, and he believed that nobody was <laughs> King Von has officially been involved in two where he was suspected of being involved, but the police didn't have enough evidence to charge. And one case where he narrowly received a not guilty verdict after a key witness disappeared and a co defendant implicated himself. Another that he's accused of organizing with five of his closest childhood friends the shooting of rival rapper FBG Duck in broad daylight at a busy shopping district, Von will never face justice for due to him losing his life only months before the feds would swoop in and arrest all five of his close friends. This particular murder would go down as one of the most brazen assassinations carried out in Chicago since the days of Al Capone. But in total, there's over Damn. 10 murders of which King Von has been connected to over the years. Nobody has looked into all of them in great detail until now. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the man, his past, and his career to find out once and for all if King Von really was the Three first hours? serial killer in hip-hop history. You in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. 
four shooters and a hail of bullets. All of them are scared of bombs. All of them are scared of bombs. We found several shell casings in this parking lot. King Law was bloodthirsty. He loved death. He loved killing. Not that I love oh, man. Just three. How many, I think? King Bond had a insatiable obsession with murder and violence. The shooting leaves one person dead, four others injured. Me? Hey, I know you. Yeah, you know me. I know you. King Bond probably would have been considered. Like, what is that nigga's name again? DV Academics? He's the reason I even got into all this stuff. They popped up on him. Huh? So at least popped up on him. King Von, real name Dagon Bennett, was born on August the 9th, 1994 in, in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up on West 78. Said some dudes in black suits popped up on um DJ Academics. I'm not surprised, man. He's been for you know, years been like constantly pushing out all that about like you know the stuff that's going on like them gangster gangster rap beefs and all that and be a young boy he been doing that since like six nine six nine he was doing that with chief keith all the way back in 2012 to everybody this useless nonsense just pushing <laughs> it out to all these young up and coming you know just, just pushing it out there to black america you no, know, the, the culture, like, 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 this is the stuff that's popping in our like music genre and just around that genre in general. So that's why you see it like kind of like proliferated more, even more throughout the years, as it, you know, at, like as the years went on. You got guys like from DJ Academics sitting there talking about it every day. Every time something happens, he's like, pulling these guys up, talking about them, and like, uh, making more. He got sixteen bodies. He's a real killer. He's like, trying to make it like almost like mythologize, like all this gangster. Sh like that, that's, that's almost what it, that's almost like what it is now. Like it's almost mythologized, like the gangster life and like the the criminal life. In South Hermitage, in an area known as Killer Ward, an area mainly affiliated with the Chicago gangs, the Gangster Disciples, and the Black Peace Zones. Vaughn would attend Barton Elementary School in the area, but despite starting life as a fairly normal kid in Chicago, he would be subjected to the influence of gangbanging in his family home from a young age. His father was Walter E. Bennett, A.K.A. Silk a well-known street dude from nearby Ada Park. Von was mainly raised by his mother, as his father was in and out of jail throughout his childhood. But Von's father was apparently a legend in the streets, with ties to the street gang, the Black Disciples. However, much like Von, despite the fearsome reputation he'd earned in the streets, it would ultimately be this proximity to gang life that would lead to his father's demise, as King Von's dad, Silk, was shot dead when Von was only 11 years old, apparently being targeted by a sniper outside of a skating a sniper. ring to an interview with King Von's uncle. <laughs> what the fuck, nigga? You're fighting insurgents in Iraq, nigga? What the fuck? They sniper. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Yeah, the sniper. I hit him with a sniper rifle. Yeah, at the skate ring, but you know. At the skate ring? It seems clear that King Von's father, Silk, was remembered as a legend of the block. However, coping with the loss of his He wasn't ready for that. The sniper? Yeah, I'm saying. You can't even. I didn't have to think about it. My enemy was a sniper. A handgun, you know. You, you can't even move. A sniper? Vaughn would rap on the unreleased song Wait that he jumped off the porch, getting deeply involved in gang politics in 2006 when he was just 12 years old. Vaughn would initially be a member of a local street crew affiliated with the Gangster Disciples called Killer Ward, being seen in numerous group pictures with that crew. And affiliates from the area would later post tweets suggesting that Vaughn was indeed putting in work for this crew during his time gangbanging in Killer Ward with Von himself corroborating he was close to the members in Killer Ward where he was born, demons, but yeah. making it clear that he's always been a member of the Black Disciples due to his family affiliation. Now, Von would live around Killer Ward up to around 2008 or 9, after which he would eventually move to the infamous Parkway Gardens housing development. This housing complex is notorious for its affiliations with the Black Disciples street gang. Parkway Gardens would later be referred to by insiders as O-Block, but prior to that, it was referred to as Wick City. And here, King Von would meet many of the people who would end up having a huge influence on his life and career. People famous for their affiliation to Oblock, whether through the gang wars going on there, or through the music that had been made about the gang war. People like Boss Top, Chief Keef, T-Roy, White White, Duke, BJ, Big A, Trey Five, Sheroid, J Money, Platoon, and countless other people that played a big role in Von's life growing up. Von would also attend a new school in the area, 
the Hyde Park Academy, where he would attend with people from other rival territories with affiliations to the Gangster Disciples. People like FBG Duck, who would even claim in a Twitter exchange in 2014 to have plotted to beat King Von up on the school bus, and people like Lil Mark, who Von would even be seen in throwback pictures with before their feud had escalated into something deadly. Von and his friends started out their gangbanging careers with fistfights with the ops at school, schoolyard scuffles that would unfortunately escalate over the coming years, developing into full-blown gang war with Von firearms involved. Over the time, gang. the teenage Von would begin getting more and more involved in Chicago street sure gang really. violence, <laughs> apparently bringing guns to school as young as age 13. Chop Squad, who went to school with both Von and G Herbo, would claim that Von would even show off guns in class, with it apparently being Von himself who started the trend of teenage gangbangers in their school bringing guns to class. I think Von was the type of person to bring a pole to school at 13, bro. Mm. Like, that's what me and her was talking about. He was like, her was like, he knew it was real when. When Vaughn walked up to him in school, he was like, he had flashed a pole or something. And he was like, Curb knew every day from there it was up. He was like, oh, we bring a gun to school? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's on now. Oh, He's like, man. every day from there, he brought, every day from there, everybody brought a gun to school. Oh, he like Vaughn was the one to start that off. In fact, G Herbo would even later rap about this on a collaboration with Vaughn called FaceTime, saying that Vaughn showed him a revolver in freshman orientation, an experience which led G Herbo to begin bringing guns to school himself too. Now, Kim Vaughn was apparently out of control as a youngster. According to one story, Vaughn actually did a shooting on prom night whilst wearing his suit, after yes. literally tweeting out that somebody better not try him in his suit. So naturally, you can imagine, Vaughn ended up spending a significant amount of time in trouble with the law as a teenager, with large patches of his most formative years spent inside jail cells. Vaughn went to jail for the first time around August 2010 at age 16 for armed robbery, apparently robbing someone for their car at gunpoint. Something that he would actually later refer to on his song Armed and Dangerous, saying that he was arrested on August 11th, two days after his 17th birthday, when he was offered 21 to 45 years in a plea deal. Von would end up spending time in boot camp, an intense military-style juvenile program ultimately rewarding him with early release. But soon after that initial charge, Von would catch another in January 2011, ultimately spending 15 months behind bars as a juvenile, being locked up between December 2010 and March 2012. And during this time of incarceration, Vaughn's best friend T-Roy would tweet calling for his release. Eventually, in March 2012, Vaughn would be a free man once again. But he was only free for a matter of months, from March to November 2012. But during this time, Vaughn would undergo a transformation, going from a gun-toting stick-up kid to a full-fledged killer, after witnessing the death of one of his close friends, which, as he put it, turned him into a demon. Like I think good. Little part to cuff it off right there. Um, yeah, like I said, man. Uh, I don't know, just like we were talking about, the area isn't just like where these guys were growing up. While he was talking, I understand the thing, but I'm like, damn, I really didn't have to. Like, you no, know, there was some crazy stuff going on, but it wasn't like dudes weren't like bringing poles to school, like not to that, not to an extent like this, where everybody felt like they had to have one at school. There was rival gangs fighting. I can't even imagine going to school and you got a rival gang you got to worry about, and they you don't got no gun. Niggas jumping you on a school bus, niggas jumping you at lunch, you go to the bathroom, just three niggas from the rival gang, you didn't even know it was in there. You're <laughs> gonna get tore up right there, man. I can't even imagine, man. And so like, that's what I'd be saying. Like, it's like, like if they, if they grew up like somewhere like. It's that heightened survival instinct. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, bro. Yeah, it's man. gonna be interesting. I mean, we guess see. You guys gonna yeah. see that? No. If you wanna see more reactions like this, let us know in the comments. Like, yeah, comment, man. subscribe, and share. Part two coming soon. Mm -hmm. Check out the 412 show. Check out uh, LB Gaming. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.